Well, when I first started out in this business, um, it was uh, the trick was to uh, figure out a way to do it well, and um, the amount of money that's being uh, at at issue is, you know, in the beginning it was five to ten million dollars. Now it's several hundred million per transaction. So anytime you have a situation where that much money is involved, uh, just the thing, just the roundings um, could be millions, and <clears throat> people fight very hard in order to protect their interests. What happens in the beginning, I think, is that uh, they try to uh, f figure out a way to be smarter than you, and they try to outsmart you. Figure that, that there's something that you don't, that maybe you don't know that they know, and then they can trick you into uh, agreeing to something that um, deprives you of your uh, rightful gain from the transaction, whatever position you have to be happen to be in at the time. And so, in the beginning, in the early '80s, when I was doing this. That seemed to me to be what the game was. I got to the point where I, I just didn't want to play that game anymore. I went to my uh, employer. I actually went to my lawyers first after having done many transactions with this same group of lawyers. And I told them that I didn't want to uh, play this game anymore. I wanted to just tell them what I, what I really thought I deserved out of this transaction. And I recognized what they uh, ought to get out of it and that I was going to actually help them uh, to protect their interests. Um, well, the lawyers became very upset about this and uh, said that they would not represent me, um, that I worked for a public company at that time, and that I needed to go to the board of directors and tell them what I was going to do and get their permission. And if I didn't do that, then they weren't actually going to help me do this or even allow me to do it. So uh, I did that. I went to the board and I asked them. I told them what I wanted to do and said I just wanted to play this completely straight be honest on each of the points, and I wanted to put together fair documents uh, that were fair for everybody. Uh, and they gave me permission to do it. And the first project that I did like that was in New Orleans. And this was in 1992. And we started going through uh, the agreements, and I went to a, a provision fairly early on, and I said, this is what this says, and it looks great, because you're going to be the developer and you're supposed to make this money. And um, But if you flip in the back, this section here in the back, it looks like actually with out doing something, without doing something really bad, you could be deprived of that. I could do that. Now, I wouldn't deprive you of it, but legally I could. And maybe I'm not here at the time in which this gets triggered. And somebody could take this money away from you. And so what I'd like my lawyer to do, and I looked over my lawyer, and I said, I would like that provision to be changed so that this unfair thing could not happen to them. My lawyer was a little uncomfortable, but he didn't want to say anything. Uh, and he said, OK, fine, let's do that. And the guys at the other side of the table, they, um, they didn't really know what to make of this. But they said, great, thank you. And we moved on. And about a half hour later, we came across another one, and they were ready to turn the page. And I says, before we turn the page, if you look here in the middle, this provision here, that ties over to this other agreement over here. and." Uh, which has a mere provision, but actually, if you don't do this exactly right, exactly perfectly, you won't get this other compensation that would come to you under certain circumstances, and I don't think that that's fair, um, because you would trigger this just too easily. It's not right, and I want to change it so that it is fair. Well, that started to really get to them, and as we went on over the period of the next several days going through these agreements, I kept doing that whenever I could. And when things would come up that really hadn't been resolved, we debated them. And I would say, well, this is what would be fair for me. Now, what would be fair for you? And as we kind of articulated it, I took their position and, and also my own. And we just kind of looked at it from a 360 degree view and what would be the right thing for all of us in this situation? Well, it, it blew them away. Uh, we were able to conclude the transaction. And uh, everybody felt great about it. We built the hotel, um, and for $25 million, they brought it in on time and on budget, which was great. Two years later, we sold it for $45 million. We made a $20 million profit, and they got half. And that transaction saved them financially. They also told me later that uh, it changed the way they did, that they did business. W one of the two of them 
I thought really kind of got it as we were going through it. And one of them I didn't think did. Well, some years later, we decided to do another project together, same two guys. And one of the fellows there, um, the one that I thought probably didn't get what I was doing, he was being um, honored that day as being the Orlean of the Year. Uh, and finally, it was his turn to say thank you or whatever. And he stood up to the microphone that was in front of him. And he looked at the people and he said, uh, thank you very much for all your kind words. Uh, he said, but um, I am not the one that you should be honoring here today. You should be honoring this man sitting next to me. And he pointed to me. And he went on to say some of the nicest things that anybody has ever said to me. Um, I can't repeat it, but he, thank, he thanked me. Um, he thanked me. They were saying, it's you, sir, him. And when it's his turn to talk, he said, it's not me, it's him. And he referenced specifically the things that I had done. Was there something that happened in your life where, where you decided you didn't want to do it the, the normal way and you wanted to do it this other way? What, what caused this to happen? Well, when I was... Um, a teenager. Um, I thought that I would become, uh, go into the ministry, uh, and become a pastor of a church. That was kind of my path. And then my father died uh, when I was a teenager. And if that sort of changed things. I thought um, I had to uh, make money, which I did, to support my, myself and my, my family, uh, my mother and my sister. Um, and I put myself through school by working. And all of those ethics and morals were still there. They're still ingrained within me. And as I began to develop in my uh, career, um, I found myself not always following those morals and ethics. And it bothered me. It always bothered me. It got to the point where I just didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted to bring what I was, what we were talking about and listening to on Sunday morning, I wanted it to bring to Monday morning and Tuesday morning. I want to live more of my life in that ethical structure, that spiritual understanding. 